Spoken Valley Company than uh, typical automotive. That's why you know we call it sort of the alpha build, beta build, uh, release candidate, um, and production. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was. That, you answered my question. I was just trying to get a sense for when within 2012 you were looking to launch. It sounds like mid 2012 is, is kind of the target right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then one last question. I don't know if you if you could or would care to comment on this, but you know, uh, you know, Nissan has has made these um, comments that may be disputable about you know their 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 cost per kilowatt hour and the lease being sort of in the mid 300 range. And I know there's you know many ways to to measure it and slice and dice that data, but I'm, I'm curious: are you seeing or or hearing anything about? You know how fast the competition's cost is falling on on battery pack cost, such that perhaps you know the gap with with Tesla is starting to narrow, perhaps faster than what you would have envisioned earlier. Well, I think first of all, it's important to note that the the lead battery pack is um, at, at a much um, more primitive level of technology than the Tesla battery pack in in a couple of important ways. The energy density is is lower, so it, it, they're not really trying to achieve a you know, the kind of range that we're trying to achieve. I think the leaf is, you know, something like 80 to 100 miles of range or something like that. Um, also, the, the sophistication at the pack level, if you sort of distinguish between the, the cells, battery cells and the, and the battery pack, the sophistication at the pack level, uh, to best of my knowledge, is, is um, really more primitive than, than even the, the first prototype that Tesla came out with. Um, it does not have, for example, uh, active liquid uh, thermal control, which is an important thing for uh, hot and cold uh, regimes. So if you don't have active liquid thermal control, uh, your battery pack temperature is going to be all over the place. Um, and in uh, cold environments, you'll see a huge degradation in range. And in, in hot environments, it'll just shut off. So um, you know, it's certainly possible to have a uh, to lower your cost of cost per kilowatt hour by going for lower energy density and by uh, removing systems like active liquid thermal control. Um, but uh, you know, so that's that, those are important things. I think sort of mitigating factors. Um, that, that said, uh, I think we'll we'll probably still be uh, well. I, I'd be a little cautious about making detailed cost predictions, but I think uh, it's fine to say uh, we do not think that uh, Nissan will uh, beat us on cost per kilowatt hour. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Even, with, even though they don't have those other things that I mentioned. <laughs> Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Joshua Paradise from Morgan Stanley. Your question, please. Hey, guys. Thanks. Good afternoon. Um, you mentioned in the release that there's been some specific improvements in manufacturability of the Model S. Are there any that you can talk about or give any color or details on? Well, we um, have um, a much better understanding now that we have identified our site as to how the manufacturing processes would be laid out for each of the shops. Uh, we're also working with our suppliers in the purchase of manufacturing equipment and some of the tooling associated uh, for the Model S. So in that regard, uh, we have uh, made uh, significant, significant process on the manufacturability of the car as well. Yeah, we've got, to think, a, 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 a very detailed plan for the manufacturing of the, of the Model S um, at the new facility uh, with um, detailed schedules laid out for all aspects of manufacturing. Um, and, uh, and as Deepak said, just ha having, having acquired the, the, the new facility gives us a big leg up on, on Model S production. And there's a lot of things that, that are already there and in place, um, both from a regulatory standpoint, and, you know, in terms of various permits and whatnot, as well as the, the equipment itself. Um, that we would otherwise have to you know, purchase and install and uh, debug and that kind of thing. So um, the, the new facility definitely gives us a, a, a great head start. Okay, great. And then also thinking about manufacturing and the CAD model, the um, the CAD package that you released, I think you said, has a, a tolerance of plus or, five, plus or minus 5 millimeters. 
So do you have a timetable when you get to, let's say, the end of 2010 and the whole design is really locked down? What would the tolerance be at that point? Um, the, well, actually, the, 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 where it will really get locked down is going to the beta build. So, um, the, and, and, and 25 millimeters is really kind of, that's, that's, that's a kind of a broad brushstroke uh, reference point. I mean, there's some things that, that are accurate to within tenths of a millimeter. Um, but it's kind of, in terms of how body panels, you know, the, kind of the maximum movement that we dimensional movement we it's not it's not, it's not really a, I should clarify it's not really a tolerancing thing it's really what we're referring to is in terms of the, the most we'd expect to change a given part uh, going from alpha to beta um, but in terms of, of level of precision in terms of uh, 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 how, how big are the say the gaps between the body panels and what level of precision. Um, what's the fit and finish of the vehicle. I mean, all of those elements um, uh, have to be on par with uh, or, or better than what, what you'd expect from any other page for that. Right. Okay. And then just one last question. Um, the R&D expenses, they have a development comp of $8.5 million. So that $8.5 million, that's not a, um, a revenue that's some sort of an offset to the expense. Can you explain how that works? Yeah, you're referring here, uh, I believe, to the uh, 2009 financials, which had uh, a $8.5 million offset to our R&D expenses. Uh, is, that, is that your question? Okay, right. So that's just for, for 2009. There's nothing there in 2010. That is correct. Okay, great. And that related to our treatment of uh, the development services or the, the engineering services that we provided to Daimler for the SMART program. Super, thanks. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Patrick Ashenbald from Goldman Sachs. Your question, please. Um, hi, good afternoon. Hi. Um, so, uh, two, I mean, a couple of questions just really on the batteries. Um, I believe that, you know, going from, um, you know, the current Roadster model um, battery is the Roadster Sport uh, to um, you know the battery pack that you guys are going to use for the uh, uh, for the Model S. I think you uh, I may have the number wrong, but I think you guys had contemplated like a 31 percent um, cost decrease. Uh, can you uh, give us a sense of um, you know sort of what improvements you're, you're making in this uh, Model S version uh, to help you you know bring that cost down? Uh, secondly, kind of related to that, uh, there's been some. Um, you know, uh, art, there's been a couple of articles just talking about, uh, you know, uh, in, in inflation and availability of, of rare earth elements, and uh, is that something that, um, you know, could potentially affect your, uh, your, your, your battery costs as well? Um, okay, so it sounds like you're probably referring to the battery cost reduction that we were talking about in the, in the IPO presentation where we, um, we show the, the model is, uh, battery cost per kilowatt hour being about 44% of what Roadster version 1 was, um, and uh, Roadster Sport being 69% of what Roadster version 1 was. Um, so essentially what, what we're saying is that the, we're able to drop the cost per kilowatt hour by you know, roughly to roughly half uh, of, of what it was uh, when we started with Roadster going into Model S. So um, the improvements there are come from both the, the, the battery pack level and at the cell level. Um, so we've been able to increase the, uh, the, the packing density of the cells considerably. Um, so there's uh, almost a 50% increase in energy density at the module level for the battery pack. Um, so that they're, they're, they're very densely packed, um, and, um, but, but still with enough room to put the liquid cooling loop in there. Um, and, uh, and maintain um, uh, pack safety so that if, uh, even if one cell goes into thermal runaway, it does not cause um, a cascading effect and cause other cells to go into thermal runaway. And this is actually a very hard problem. I guess the, the more energy you pack into the, the, the higher the energy density you pack, the harder this problem gets. 
So if, if you want to do a low energy density pack, it's a much easier problem than a high energy density pack, which is, I think, sense, sense to reason and common sense. Um, we've also uh, changed the cell chemistry to one which uh, has a lower fundamental cost. Um, in the roadster, uh, the cathode was, um, or is, uh, um, cobalt. Uh, in the Model S, it's a nickel cobalt aluminum cathode. Um, so we're using roughly a, a third, only, only a third as, as much cobalt as we do in, in the roadster. And um, the, the cobalt isn't strictly, I'm speaking, really a rare, rare earth element, but it is expensive. It's the most expensive ingredient in the, in the battery pack. So being able to reduce that to a third of its level in, in Rosa is, uh, gives us a much lower material cost at the cell level than, um, than it was, was previously the case. And the energy density is actually higher. So it, it's about a 15% increase in energy density at the cell level uh, going to the new chemistry. Um, and we've worked closely with Panasonic uh, to develop a cell that, although it's in the 18650 form factor, so it's 18 millimeters high, a diameter by 65 millimeters in length, um, the internals of the cell uh, are actually optimized for an automotive application rather than a, than a laptop application. Um, so, but because the external form factor is still 18650, 18, 18, uh, we, we leverage the economies of scale that Panasonic has in the factories, um, uh, but, but are able to nonetheless have an, an automotive optimized cell. Um, and um, the, the, the changes associated with, with that, that cell, that, that's intellectual property that, that Tesla owns and has, and has applied for patents on. So um, that's something that uh, in the future, as we look to, achieve, to obtain a second source for our cell manufacturing, um, we can transfer those, those changes to the second source as well. And to add to what Elon said, which is primarily significant design improvements in both the battery pack and the cell, we will see some additional economies of scale as we manufacture these in-house at the higher volumes as compared to our pre present production. Yeah, rate. absolutely. Economies of scale, certainly. I mean, obviously going from 500 um, cars a year to, to 20,000, there's, there's economies of scale across the board, including the battery pack. Um, and thanks. And, and just on the, you know, potential for, um, you know, some of the element inflation, is there something that you can do, I mean, or is there a hedging plan that you guys can sort of undertake to protect, a, 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 you know, against that, or, or, you know, how do you think about controlling, you know, the potential inflation costs, because who knows how much, you know, for instance, cobalt is going to cost, you know, three years from now? We have considered some hedging uh, activities, uh, given the, uh, the limited nature and the size of the market for trading of some of these um, elements, but there's nothing that we've implemented at this point. Certainly, as we get closer to the launch of Model S, we will look at these again, um, and uh, you know, we can also do it by contract with uh, our cell manufacturers. So there are a couple of different ways of doing it. We'll evaluate it as we get closer to the launch of Model S. Yeah, it, it's always tough with hedging strategies, you know, because you, no, no hedging strategy comes comes for free. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we did consider that uh, even for the roadster, but ultimately decided that it, that, that it wasn't really a cost-effective way to do, to do a hedging strategy. Um, and if, if we did make the cell supplier, Sanyo in the case of the roadster, sort of um, guarantee us a, a, a price, then of course they've got to, they've got to build in um, margin within their within what they sell it to us for, so it it, it ends up not being uh, a great way to go. Um, yeah, um, the, the 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 best thing we, we I think the, the path that we're taking by by going to a chemistry that is um, only only has a third as much cobalt um, as um, the nickel the nickel cobalt aluminum uh, chemistry. Um, that, that's that's really the, the thing that gives us the most comfort um, in that, you know, it's some sort of, even if cobalt cost were to spike, it only has, uh, you know, uh, what call it, 30, 30 to 35 percent of the impact that, that it would have otherwise had. Um, and aluminum and nickel are, are not, you know, we're not too worried.